today I am going to show you how to paint a wave. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. For today's tutorial, I have painted this wave in acrylics using Liquitex Basics. I have the colors I use listed below in the video description. I've painted this on a Frederick's Gallery wrapped box canvas that I covered in gesso and then sanded down so I had a nice smooth finish for the painting itself. When doing this sort of detail and blending a lot of wet into wet, I definitely prefer a very, very smooth canvas to work on. If you're using a canvas that has a lot of tooth, it's going to be really difficult, if not impossible, to get a very, very smooth finish and lots of detail. If you're supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over there where the real-time version of this tutorial with voiceover is available for you guys now. So let's get on to the tutorial. On the shape of my wave, that back waterline or horizon line looks like it's lopsided. It's not. That's actually very flat. It's just the angle of the camera. Now, the wave itself, the portion that is going to be crashing over, I look at this as more of a mountain peak. I want it to be lightest at the top of the peak, and then it's fading down into a dark shadowed area where it meets the flatter water. And then the flat portion of the water, I'm doing a slightly lighter color. This is just a base of gray. It's going to end up covered with lots of paint on top. So the color of that one doesn't really matter so much. But I do want it to go from really light, fade to dark where it meets the rest of the water, and then a medium tone for the flat portion. For the crashing part, I am painting these with curved strokes. I don't want this to look flat and I'm leaving some of these streaks showing. I don't want to completely smooth it out like I did the rest of the water. I'm putting down a base of a grayish green color for where my sea foam, where it's splashing up is going to be. Now I'm taking a darker green. I wanted a bit more depth in my water and just using the teal color that I used for the rest of it, I wasn't getting that dimension. And so I added a darker green over parts of this and that's just a glaze, lots of water, very little paint. Drying that layer out with the hair dryer. So if you're working in oil, I would let that dry at least overnight. Now I want that mountain top peak Thing to have a brighter color so I'm using a lighter teal I've added more white to my teal color and now I'm adding where the sea foam shadows are going to go around the outside or the rest of the edges there drying that off when you use the hair dryer make sure your canvas has cooled before you start painting otherwise the acrylic paint will dry too quickly as you apply it Now I'm putting in the veins of the wave. Now this is what is going to create the movement in your water. It is so important that you get these in there, going the right direction. For this section where the wave is lifted up from the flat portion of the water, I have more vertical lines and more diagonal lines in there. Where the water flattens out, I have to switch that so that my lines are very, very horizontal. I have short vertical lines and then they lengthen out towards the horizontal line. So I've got long, short, short, long, short, short. Those long sections are my horizontal horizontal lines. This is something that I do recommend. Practice drawing out your veins like this on paper before you hit the canvas. Get a feel for that because this is really what is going to create the look of water here. You can really see clearly here where the flatter portions of the water, those lines are long and horizontal and then they switch to where they're more elongated, where you get up towards the portion of the wave that is lifting up and ready to curl and crash over. I'm using a liner brush to get a few little details in there. That one is a synthetic hog hair bristled brush. I believe it's a number four. Pulling out some more highlights on those sea foam lines. Now at this point, those are pretty bright. I am gonna come back through and glaze darker colors over them to tone them down. But I like to do this in many layers. I want some of these to be definite grays, some of them to be more of the teal green, and some of them to be a lighter teal and some white. I've got so many varying colors in there and that's going to really help me build the depth here. If I try to do this all with white, even if my lines are perfectly drawn, the shapes are the right width or the right thinness, it won't matter, it's going to look flat. Onto the sea foam, I am using a stiff brush, it's a stiff round brush, and I am dabbing white paint on there. I do not have much water, if any, mixed into this. I want this to be very thick and very dry to get this look. 
You want to dab these on more in terms of clumps. Don't get polka dots. Polka dots won't look natural. I'm using a palette knife along with that same stiff white brush and I'm flicking paint, the same white paint. I've added a little bit of water to it and I'm flicking that paint on there to get more of that seafoam spray look. Some people will also take an old toothbrush and flick the paint that way, also an option. Adding detail on the crashing waves with white and a liner brush. I'm keeping a very loose, messy hand there, very shaky lines. If you do a bunch of straight, smooth, smooth lines, your wave will look flat. If you want it to look natural, you need that variation. It's good to be messy. I'm adding shadows in the seafoam splashing portion. And I will come back through with a smaller stiff round brush and dab in some white on top of that, just to define my shapes here. Again, if you've got polka dots, if everything just looks like a bunch of evenly shaped dots, they it won't look right. Try it again and get more variation in there so that you get that natural wave look. And this wave took me about two or two and a half hours to paint and I've painted a lot of waves so I do paint them very quickly. Take your time. Don't feel like you have to do it in the same amount of time. I'm adding some more shadows and glazing over some of the white that I have there, building up more depth and then coming on top of it with sharper white. The brush that I'm using there is a small, flat, synthetic brush. I believe it's a Taclon bristled brush. Adding another set of gray over the veins on the wave there. Now I'm glazing more of the greenish gray color over much of this. Now I don't want my water, the portion where the water is flat, I don't want that to really be the center of attention. And right now it really does stand out too much. So I'll come back through and I'm going to do, after I get the details here, I'm going to glaze a layer of a greenish gray color right over it. Lots of water, very little paint. And then I, this is going to let me pull out just a few highlights of white. To, this will give me more control of where the viewer's attention is. While I want this to look very good, very detailed, I don't want so much detail and so much contrast that this is where the viewer is pulled. So that's why I toned it down and then I'm coming back through and adding a few highlights on top. You can do this in as many layers as you want. If you have a layer that looks terrible, glaze over it and add another layer on top. The more layers that you get, you're building more depth. So even some of those bad layers end up being really good in the end. If you're working in oil, it's a good idea to let it dry in between many of these layers. That way you don't end up with mud. Better defining some of the shape in that water now, making sure that I've got a lot of those long horizontal lines. And that is it. Make sure to head back next week where I will be demonstrating the entire painting. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the real-time version of this tutorial is available for you guys to watch now, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, social media tips for artists each Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, all those social media sites. The links are below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and and see real-time clips of whatever it is that I'm currently working on. You can also sign up for my email list where you get a free gift of a two hour long version of my orca painting that I did several months ago. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Seriously, the whole time I was painting this, I kept singing Flipper in my head. It's stuck in my head right now, actually. When I was a kid, I was so in love with Sandy from that show. I just aged myself, didn't I?